We have heard from Kamala Harris today and she's really trying to distance herself from the president. Let's take a listen. First of all, he clarified his comments, but let me be clear. I strongly disagree with any criticism of people based on who they vote for. You know, millions of Americans are watching that. They're wondering, is she sincere or does she share the same view as Joe Biden? So let me get this straight, uh, Kamala. By saying that Joe Biden clarified his comments today, this is gaslighting beyond epic proportions. Do they mm -hmm. think the American people are stupid? Thank God for Elon Musk buying up the Twitter space of, of now that we recall, uh, we refer to as X, because Guess what? We have receipts. We have Joe Biden on tape referring to Americans that support Donald Trump as garbage. We actually have it on tape. So now the White House is trying to walk back these comments. Joe Biden put out a statement. Yes, yeah, trying to walk back these comments. We have Kamala Harris distancing herself from the sitting commander in chief. But who is that fooling? They have been telling us for the past three and a half years, do not believe your lying eyes. Do not believe your lying eyes when it comes to the open border. Do not believe your lying eyes when it comes to the inflation reports when it comes to Americans going to the gas tank trying to fill up their uh, truck, trying to fill up their cars. Don't believe your lying eyes when it comes to Americans going to the grocery store and prices have skyrocketed and they can't afford to put food on the table. And now what are they telling us? Don't believe our ears when we have something <laughs> on tape. Again, this is epic gaslighting and I don't think the American people are falling for it. Absolutely well said. Look, Kamala Harris has continued doing interviews this week and I don't know why she's doing them anymore. We're not learning a single thing from them. The vice president sat down with Local 4 News in Washington, D.C. earlier in the week and she still does not have an answer on the economy. What's your message to Michigan voters in terms of the economy? We have auto workers who are being laid off and those who fear that they might be laid off. The average person can't afford groceries or their rent. And recent polls in Michigan show that Michigan voters believe that Donald Trump would do a better job with handling the economy and bringing jobs back. What do you say to that? Well, let's start with this. I come from the middle class, and I'll never forget where I come from. My mother worked very hard. She, by the time I was a teenager, was able to save up for our first home. That's it. That's her strategy, that she grew up a middle class kid. That's her answer to everything. You know, it would just be easier for Kamala Harris at the campaign if they just pre-recorded that answer, right? Middle class family. I was born in a middle class family. <laughs> save her time. No she absolutely has no plan. She has no vision. She has no agenda. And now you've noticed that the Kamala Harris camp is putting out these last minute, these last ditch efforts to try to appeal to certain groups and mentioning things like the economy. So at the same time that Kamala Harris is pandering about giving loans to black men, that's her new thing, right? Promising moms that they're going to, you know, new time moms, first time moms are going to pay for uh, things for us. What, you're going to pay for my new baby stroller? I don't think so. Where have you been for the past three and a half years? You didn't care about me. You didn't care about the black community. She also wants to tax unrealized gains, raise taxes, increase the price of homes. I mean, for my generation, the millennials, we see right through this. We can see right yeah. through her vision for the economy again zero plan her entire economic plan is just a bunch of word salad it doesn't make any sense but why would we be surprised she's never spoken to these issues of inflation or the economy before she hasn't done anything of substance as vice president and now she's trying to win a race on these last ditch efforts a race that she is so clearly losing donald trump has perfectly laid out his economic plan he has already said multiple times no tax on tips no tax on overtime he'll lower our gas prices drill baby drill and again, star contrast to Kamala Harris, who really has given us zero plan, zero agenda, and zero plan on the economy and how she's going to fix crises after crises that she has caused. It is such a stark contrast when you look at the way Kamala Harris and Joe Biden uh, conduct themselves in interviews compared to Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. And I think J.D. Vance is really winning Americans over. Let's listen to him during his town hall with Newsmax. Look, I think a lot of Michigan voters are asking, what are you going to do to make my groceries more affordable? And Kamala's response is, well, Donald Trump is bad. What are you going to do to make it so that I, you know, especially for young people, what are you going to do to make it so that we can afford to buy a home in this country that all of us love? And her response is, J.D. Vance is a fascist. And what are you going to do to close down that southern border that Kamala Harris opened? And her response is, well, Donald Trump's voters are bad people. 
I don't think that this is a person with a closing message that can win in the state of Michigan because it's clear she has no actual solutions for the problems that in many cases she played a critical role in creating. He's so well-spoken. He's so articulate. You know, I think, think some Americans were a little bit sceptical about him at the start. He may have damaged the Trump campaign with the cat lady comments, but he's really showing Americans why Donald Trump picked him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's there's no lies out there about people not necessarily liking Donald Trump's uh, brash personality. He can be harsh at times. He can be aggressive. So I think having a running mate and someone like a J.D. Vance, who just has more of a calm demeanor, mm. um, he knows how to talk to the average American. Uh, he, he knows how to talk about issues. He knows how to talk to females and to males, right? Um, uh, and it's, he's not telling the American people to vote on a single issue and vote based off gender, which is what Tim Walls does, telling them to vote candidate because she's a female and because she will support uh, allegedly women's reproductive rights and that single issue of abortion. J.D. Vance isn't doing that. And another thing, J.D. Vance is putting himself in uncomfortable positions mm. on uncomfortable networks. He's putting himself everywhere and anywhere that he can possibly have a conversation with the American people. Uh, so I absolutely think it's such a power team. And it's not just J.D. Vance. It's everyone that Donald Trump and his running mate, Vance, are bringing onto their team, bringing onto their squad. RFK Jr., who you just showed, who was just pictured there. Tulsi Gabbard, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy. I mean, this is an ultimate dream team. And I think the American people that may have not liked Donald Trump's rhetoric in the past and, you know, are not a fan of some of his life uh, stories there, sleeping with porn stars. I mean, I don't really think the American people care about that, but maybe ha haven't been a fan of his in the past. They see the people that he's bringing onto his team, that he has vowed to bring on as part of his administration. The transition team has already been working with these people behind the scenes. We already know that. And I think that's appealing to the American people. I think the diversity, I think having lifelong Democrats that have said, I did not leave the Democratic Party, right? The Democratic Party left me. That's an exact quote from RFK Jr., who took the stage at Madison Square Garden on Sunday, and he started his speech with that. I think that resonates with the American people right now. The American people that feel like they don't have a voice in their elected officials. Uh, and I think J.D. Vance speaks to that forgotten American out there. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Are you hearing that from many voters on the ground? Uh, obviously, being in Australia, I'm seeing most of the commentary online, but I'm also hearing people say that, look, I'm not really voting for Donald Trump, but I'm voting for the people that Trump has around him. RFK Jr., Elon Musk, there's a lot of smart people around him. Yeah, you know who we're hearing that from? People that have not completely lost their common sense. People who actually still want the American dream again. Because you have those folks that have such bad Trump derangement syndrome here in the United States that they cannot see past orange man bad. And I know we make a lot of jokes about this. I know on, you know, on X there's constantly people putting out posts, making jokes and making fun. But it's it's really quite concerning that some Americans are not able to see behind the Trump derangement syndrome and they're not able to get over uh, and, and see past that and, and see the power uh, and, and how massive this is that we are having lifelong Democrats step away from the party and join this movement. And we have a movement that's Make America Great Again, partnered with Make America Healthy Again. Uh, I mean, you know, the country, any country, is never going to be measured by its its open borders, by its GDP, by the NASDAQ. It's always going to be measured by the health of its people and the opportunities to, to be full, full and happy and, and prosperous and, and be able to have the family unit, be able to have that American dream. And those are the values that the conservative movement right now that has, again, an RFK Jr., a Chelsea Gabbard, an Elon Musk promising uh, to, to make uh, us energy independent again, promising to dismantle these three-letter agencies. A Vivek Ramaswamy that says not only do we need to dismantle these three-letter agencies, but we may, need to make sure that the people we elect to run our government are actually the ones running our government. These are people that are very wealthy on their own. They're not career politicians. And again, I think that speaks to the American people. So yes, the Americans, to answer your question, that still have common sense and have not been completely <laughs> brainwashed. Yes, some of them are able to sit there and say, I may not have supported the way Donald Trump speaks. I may not like his personality. 
but I support this team that he has, again, vowed to bring on, that he's already working with to make a lot of promises. And I support this larger vision of making America great. And I think um, we're going to see that reflected in the polls next week. Turning Point Action official spokeswoman, Caitlin Sinclair, love having you on Power Hour. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. God bless.